an application has to be fast and responsive. If you go on a website and you find that it's very slow, it might be the very last time you visit that website. Performance has a direct impact on revenue and user engagement. And if you are in any way involved in developing an application, you need to make sure that your application is performant. One way to improve performance is to use caching. So let's see what caching is and how it enhances performance. And at the end of the video, I'll also show you that caching goes beyond performance and has other benefits. When a client interacts with a server, we want the interaction to be as fast as possible. But unfortunately, transporting the data can be slow. Even at the speed of light, if the distance is long enough, it can take 100 milliseconds for the data to travel from the client to the server and back. So the server processing the request and generating the response can also affect the response time. So computation time plus transport time adds up and can make an interaction slow. So we took a client-server interaction as an example, but the exact same applies to any interaction between two systems. It could be an interaction between a server and a database, between an application on your laptop trying to access files on your hard drive, or even an interaction between a function calling another function in your source code. The principle is the exact same. The interaction involves transport and computation time. So caching is a technique that aims to reduce the response time by taking a shortcut. So instead of going through the whole interaction, the idea is to store the result of an expensive computation or the result of a previous interaction and reuse it when the same computation or interaction is needed again. So let's take your browser as an example. When you visit a website, your browser stores files that make up the whole website on your hard drive. And the next time you visit the website, your browser will load the files from your hard drive instead of downloading them again from the server. And let's say if your browser needs to actually send the request to the web server, it might not even go all the way to the server itself. It might hit a CDN server instead. And the CDN server is a cache server that stores the website's file and serves them to the client. And if there are no CDN in place and the request actually hit the web server, the website infrastructure might have additional caching. So there could be a load balancer with a cache that serves the responses to the client without even hitting the actual web server. And if let's say the web server itself is involved, it might use a cache such as Redis to store results of database queries and serve the response to the client without even hitting the database. But let's go beyond that and suppose that the web server is querying the database. You've guessed it, the database itself might have a cache as well. So databases like your laptop run on physical hardware and even at the hardware level, the CPU has a caching mechanism. Some data might be cached in the RAM rather than stored on the hard drive. And as you can see, caching happens at all levels. But no matter where and when it happens, the principle remains the same. We want to move the data closer to the consumer and potentially use more performance storage for that data. But of course, the data at the source can change. And if the data at the source changes, the cached data is no longer valid. So with any caching system, there needs to be a strategy to deal with stale data. So one common approach is to set a time to live for the cached data. The data in the cache is only valid for a certain amount of time. And after that time, the data is considered stale. And the next time the data is requested, the cache will fetch it from the source and store it again in the cache. So other strategies involve invalidating the cache when the source data changes, either by pushing the changes to the cache or by having the cache itself check the sources for changes. So the strategy to use to invalidate the, the cache will depend on the use case and the caching implementation. However, stale data, stale data is not the only problem to solve. So cache storage is often limited in size or has a higher cost. So it's not always possible to cache the entire storage data. And when the cache storage capacity is reached, we have to make a decision on what to keep and what to remove from the cache. So this is called 
cash eviction. So there are different strategies to decide what to keep and what to remove from the cash. But the most common strategy is to remove the least recently used data. But you can also remove the least frequently used data or the most expensive data to compute. Again, it all depends on the use case and the caching implementation. Caching adds complexity to your system. So cache invalidation and cache eviction are complex problems to solve. So you should only use caching when you have identified a performance problem and you know that using caching, using caching might help solve that problem. But even if performance is not a primary concern, there are other reasons you might want to use caching. So you could have a system that receives a high volume of requests. So let's say your web server can handle the load, or maybe you have multiple instances of your web server behind the load balancer. But at the end of the request chain, you might have a database that is not, that is not able to handle the high volume of requests. If you have a cache in front of your database, you can reduce the load on the actual database and improve the overall system performance. But let's say, even if your web server instances can handle the load, you might want to avoid having your load balancer sending requests request over the network to those web server instances. And you also don't want maybe to process the requests. Remember, network traffic and computation time are not free. If your load balancer can serve the responses from its own cache, you can reduce the load on the web server and have less network traffic, which ultimately helps you save money on your cloud bill or your infrastructure bill. So caching is a very powerful technique and it can improve performance, but it's not only about the response, the response time. It's also about reducing the load on the source and reducing the network traffic. So caching adds complexity to your system. So you need to use it when you have identified that it solved an actual performance issue. Now that you understand how caching works, you can go check out my video on CDNs or the one on load balancer to see caching in action.